Thank you everyone as we, this is Pastor Robert Wilson to come forward to do our morning message. And this morning, as I said, I'm going to be talking about the definition of true sermon. And it is so important, matter of fact, to me this time of the year, we tend to want to do the uh, New Year's resolution. I've done series or sermons before where it's always about that new man. You know, we make a new res year's resolution to do something better than we did the year before. And, you know, normally it's uh, dieting and uh, you know, uh, maybe a, a goal that we have set in mind. Uh, maybe it's more exercise. And it, what tends to happen normally is after a good month or so, people, all those New Year's resolutions tend to fade away. Now, there are some that will see it to the end and accomplish their goals, but there are others, you know, it becomes a little bit harder or it was more work, I could say, than they thought it was when they thought the idea and they give up. Well, for us in this new year of coming of 2024, no, we want to be new. We don't want to give up. We want to have more of what God wants us inside of us so that we can live a better life and be a vessel that his light shines so brightly through that the world would want to know who Jesus is and they would want to come unto him. Why? Because they will see Christ in us in our daily walk. Now, is it going to be easy to answer the question? Of course, it's no. The world hates Christ. The world hates Christians. And so when you're in a world that despises you, you're going to have to deal with a lot of negativity and things that may hurt your feelings and things that may threaten you. But we got to press forward towards the mark because eternity is a long time and we just don't want to give up. In my um, text that I have for this is Proverbs, the third chapter, verse five and six. And it's trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Uh, of course, uh, that's the NIV translation. There are different translations. That, um, it's, it's still the same thing. And, and it's important that we trust in, in God with all our heart. I actually, when I was going through this, thinking about something I could relate to this, this message. And for me, it's truck driving. Uh, it could be any career out there for any of you on the line. Um, right now, doesn't matter. But for me, it's truck driving. Truck driving is one of the ones that kind of stuck with me. And as I was thinking about my songs that they were being played, uh, the one thing, especially with the Holy Ghost, in one of my former lives, I, that's one of my careers, I always say, uh, is in having God, the Holy Ghost, it's like a network. And, and most of us have networks. I don't care if it's the phone network, it's your home network, it's your work network. You know that most of us now, majority of us, have a password or passcode. And you can't get onto that network or connect to that network unless you have that passcode. And for us to get with God, it is this Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. That is our password that gets us connected to God to get us to enjoy everything God has for us, just like we get to enjoy the things on the network, and whether at home, work, or any other place that we may go to. So when you think about discernment or true discernment, you got to understand that it's not just a perception. It's not something just, you know, I got a feeling about this. I got a feeling about that. It's also the under, being able to understand and apply spiritual wisdom that helps us in navigating the complexities of life. And when I was going through that, that's what made me think about truck driving, navigating, being able to apply, being able to understand um, when I'm going from one place to another to pick up a load, to deliver a load, which is the best route to go, which route has the, the, the least expensive gas or is more uh, efficient for me to travel. Maybe it's less mountains because I have a heavy load. All of those things play a part in picking up a load. Um, people think, some people think that in truck driving, all we do is sit behind the wheel and drive. And that's not true. It's so much more that goes into truck driving um, it's the reason why they call us professional drivers because we had to go through some extra training just to get the CDL. And then after that, you had to learn to navigate the big old, in my case, I had a 53 foot trailer. Some people have double, some of them have triple trailers. And it, it seems very uh, 
overwhelming or awe. You'll be in awe just to see how a person can actually drive these big old vehicles. But in all of this, you have to have more than just sitting behind the wheel and holding the steering wheel and being able to step on the gas and step on the brake. There are so many more other things that's involved. And it's the same thing in our having true discernment. It's being able to be active in God's truth, to be aware, truly aware of what's going on around us and all the subtlety that, that, that the enemy is throwing our way. We kind of went over some of the subtle, I did last week, uh, about some of the subtleties that come our way in technology and um, complaints, I should say, being um, even in our own community, community. As a matter of fact, mom, my brother Bonnie was praying. I heard her talking about wanting to be one. And that is something that we really do need to strive with in discernment. We need to stop all this bickering and looking back and forth and fighting because we all don't belong to the same ministry. We all don't look alike as far as skin color. We may all not talk alike because of language barriers, but if we all serve as one Jesus Christ, we should all still be a part of the same body. Again, I think about my own natural body. Come on now, I got a head, I got eyes, I got nose, teeth, mouth, tongue, I got toe digits, I got a knee. I got a, a actual foot in the heel and all these things play different roles in my body, but it's all still part of the same body. And that's the way we have to be as we go into this, uh, as we continue our journey into Christ. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. And again, I actually have seven points to uh, about discernment. And the first point is being rooted in God's word. There is nothing to me, such is more important than a true rooted system. I, I like to talk about the law of the harvest. What you plant is what you're going to reap. And if we're not rooted, I mean solidly rooted, when we talk about the soil, you know, the, the soil, the good soil was the one that actually took the seed and allowed it to get down deep into the, into the soil and then it came up and it produced what it's supposed to be. But if we're not truly rooted in God's word, we're going to have some issues. And one of the things I think about in discernment, I, I hope I'm in my right point when I say this one, is about how to get from point A to point B. In the, in the olden days, when I say olden days, just probably 10, 15 years ago, they used maps. Really didn't have, I mean, it probably could be a little bit longer, but they used maps. And a lot of people are not comfortable with reading maps because they look at a line and they see another line here and they say, I don't know what these lines are mean. But these lines actually show you how to get from point A to point B. Now, depending on the type of map that you have, some maps are just a, a map of the whole United States, and it shows you the major thoroughfares across the United States. Well, they're good for helping you get from point A to point B. But when you have to get to those little intricate parts, like once you get off the freeway and you need to get from this exit off the freeway to the actual uh, location where you're picking up or delivering from, you need a city map. And in God's word, we have the Bible and the Bible is just like that big old map, but we need to understand some of the intricacies of the Bible. And how do we do that? We get a concordance, we get a Bible dictionary, we get a Bible encyclopedia. We can actually get Bible maps to understand where all of these events have taken place. And we have to learn to understand what it is that the Bible is truly saying to us. So that's how we become rooted in God's word. We have to have the right tools to actually get a better understanding of God's word. And in, in, a, in, in the trucking world, it's a physical map. We have atlases, and then you also have the GPS. With the GPS, the thing that I tend to uh, frown upon um, the most efficient or right direction you want to go. And so what do you end up doing is you can find yourself getting out and getting into trouble. I had a GPS, or I have a GPS still. It was a trucker's GPS. We actually have our own special GPS for trucking. And that GPS told me to go down this road. I went down the road because I've never been there before, went down this road. And the next thing I know, I see this sign that says, no trucks. And I look and I'm like, oh my God, this GPS done took me down this wrong road, right? And 
you know, once you get on something like that, you actually, I got a ticket once before for, for being on a road that says no trucks. And they will actually give you a ticket. But you can say, well, I follow the GPS. Well, GPS has this little disclaimer now that says that the road will not always be, or the direction may not always be accurate. And you must yourself have to try to trace this route out. Well, that doesn't do you any good when you've already went down that road and you don't see a sign until you're halfway down the block. And it's going to be the same thing with us. It doesn't do us any good when we hear somebody who, who sounds good on, on the internet or on the TV or on the phone, or you're live in person, and, and we sit up there and we're following them and following them, and all of a sudden our time has come, and we find out because we didn't take the time to go back and, and make sure that route was correct, and we ended up seeing the Lord, and the Lord says, uh, depart from me. We don't. That, that's the wrong time to find out that we have went down the wrong path. And that's the same thing, like I said, with the GPS. We can't just always allow uh, it to just guide us blindly. So that's what it is, guiding us blindly. So the next thing is being spiritually vigilant. And again, we want to make sure that we are truly being aware of what is coming our way. I always like to talk series I do. I love talking about junk food because being a trucker and we go to these truck stops, that's mostly what they have for us to eat is junk food. And I mean, chips, cookies, cakes, candies, uh, sodas, you know, stuff along that line. And then even the so-called solid food they have is low grade. The hot dogs or things along that line, the fast food uh, facilities, that's most of the time in the truck. Food. But when the day is over, we would tell someone that we've eaten, right? Which what you've eaten is not actually oh, good for you, but it's still considered food. And I'm talking about something subtle because in the case of most food, who knows outside of those who read uh, the actual ingredients on the box, what's actually in the food. Most, or I'm gonna say some, love, we just pick up, pay for it and eat it. Don't care what's in it, we just eat it. And I hear people say, well, you got to die from something. But if that's my option of dying, I'd rather have, if I can have a choice of not dying of this or dying of that, I'd rather have old age as a death than me just putting bad food in my, in my body. And that's the reason why I die. So we have to be more aware of how the enemy is coming at us. And just because someone is preaching the word and just because someone may be popular in preaching the word, remember the Bible says this. There is going to be a group of people that's going to say, Lord, Lord. And these are people that are preaching his word. They said, I prophesied, I healed the sick, I cast out demons in your name. And Jesus said, depart from me because I knew you not. So we got to understand it because someone may mention his name, just because someone is standing up there and they may sound good, that they all are not following Christ. And we have to learn to be discerning so that we can understand what is of God and what is not of God. And so we have to be aware. And in, in the trucking world, again, not just outside of the food, but we also have to be aware of how people drive around us. And, and that's a major thing with us um, because you can look at a person and a person, if y'all notice it in your own cars, they on the phone, playing with the phone. And the next thing you know, their car kind of swerved and a little bit, you know, and it'd be some little things that could just give you signs that they are not actually they're distracted driving is the word that we use. And it, it blows with truckers. They're, they're truckers, you can tell, they are playing on their phone. They're, they're, the truck get the swerving, weaving back and forth. Or you can sit there, one of the hazards that we have in trucking for me is somebody sitting on the side of the road and they may not have hazard lights or a blinker or whatever the case may be. And the next thing you know, as you get up on them, they pull out in front of you. And you have to be aware. So what we do most of the time is we actually uh, lane change because you don't know what they're going to do. And it, again, in our spiritual world, if, if it's just not looking right, if something seems like it could just be just off, maybe you just need to take a lane change, get over a little bit and, and actually view what's going on from a distance. Now, my next point is prayer. Also, very, very important in our um, discernment. Why? Because in true prayer, we talk to God and God talks to us. If we pray, 
correctly, I was gonna say uh, with the right path, with it correctly, God is going to answer our prayer. But again, I'm gonna go back to what I was talking about with people just preaching God's word or just preaching and they bring God in the picture and, and all of a sudden they want us to just focus so much on materialism, so much on wealth, so much on fame. And that becomes our main focus in our prayer. We care so much about all these materialistic possessions on this planet that that's what we are praying for. And God may say, no, I, I want to break you from that. And I'm not going to grant that prayer, but you keep on praying because you say God is going to answer that prayer because he knows my heart and all that good stuff. But that is not God's will for you. See, when we talk about praying, it has to be his will for you. You can pray and you can ask, but still it's up to him to say yay or nay. And if he decides to say nay, you should have been in tune. You should have been connected. That's where his spirit comes involved. You should be able to say, you know what? God is telling me he really doesn't want that for me right now. There are some, some things I need to go through. I think about with Jacob. And Jacob, you know, uh, how he part, well, how he tricked Israel, uh, Jacob, uh, his father. But he didn't really trick uh, Esau. Esau gave up his, his birthright for some food. So that was on him. But the fact that they tricked the dad out of giving up the blessing and he had to go through uh, Leah, his, his uncle did it right back to him and tricked him in, in marrying um, Leah first and then Ray tried to get him with the sheep. So you do reap what you sow. And in this case, he had to continue going through things. And one of the things he said to God as he was traveling to see his uncle was, if you bring me back safely, I will serve you. But he got to serving God long before that because he was praying and when he wrestled with, with, with the angel, um, he was already looking for a blessing. He knew he needed something more than himself to help him when he came back to see his brother because he feared for the fact that he knew he did was wrong and he had to face that punishment. But God was right there still being for him. So when we pray and be discerning in our prayers, understand, I mean, honestly, is this really what God wants for me or is this what I want for myself? Why? Because I want to be able to live here. I want to be able to do this. Now, I'm not talking about safety-wise. I'm not talking about getting out the element-wise. I'm talking about God has blessed you with a good home. God has blessed you with a good car, even a, a good job and some good clothing. But no, you because the commercial came on TV and they showed this or the, the television program, whichever one. I know back in the day it was Cribs and then they had the, the car thing and I wanted all these things because I saw now again I don't knock people wanting a nice car I, I don't care everybody got their taste in cars some pop person may want a, a BW bug and then somebody of course may want a Mercedes why not because somebody so they just like some of the features I know as I get older or we get older I told my wife I don't like riding in them uh, regular rental cars anymore because they're not as comfortable especially since I like to drive a long way I want a car that's more comfortable so yes I would love to be more in a luxury car when we travel and rent a car wise because I can be comfortable and when I get out I won't be as stiff and sore as I was if I was in one of the regular compact cars. That's why I would want one. There was a reason behind it, not just because I want to keep up with the Joneses or anybody else because I saw it on TV and I think I will look whatever the new hip term for today uh, great in that vehicle. And so I must understand if God says I got a great view of that yearning for materialism you're not getting it discernment will let you know you won't waste and i'm gonna say waste your time i'm past you know i don't like saying wasting time on anything but you won't be wasting your time in constantly praying for something god is not going to grant you because you have not gotten to the point where god can bless you with that and you not fall away from him because you know god, god in all knowing he knows in giving you something, what effect it may have or it is going to have in your life. So that's where discernment comes in in prayer. And again, as I mentioned about us being aware of the trucking world, about how people are driving around us. Then the other part, and this is being very, uh, it just keep growing. Being theologically informed or just being so informed in God's word, knowing God's word truly. With so much false teaching going on, the Bible had false teaching going on back when it was still being developed and written. 
So you know false teaching has grown exponentially today in our world. And I remember um, Bishop James Williams coming back one time from a, an event and we were talking. It was a pastoral event. And he was saying that he asked one of the gentlemen about um, what made him decide to become a pastor or whatever the case may be. And the guy said, for the money. He said, I decided I want to be a pastor because I want the money. And that was a shame because it, it, it's a calling to me. It, it's not something I chose. I, I, I tell people, I didn't ask for this calling. I didn't ask to even preach. But God wanted me to preach. And I ran from it. I really did. I ran for seven years and God finally got tracked. He got me. I guess he tracked me down, but he finally got me to, 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 to surrender. And I came aboard and I refused to give it up now. But the thing is, when we hear the word, and I'm going to go back to my GPS and my map uh, analogy. Does the word line up? I mean, if you have the other tools I mentioned and you took some time and where technology is so much easier nowadays and you just took some time and you went through it and you got a better understanding of what God said in this passage, whichever passage you were looking at, and then you heard someone that's my, that's the GPS. The GPS is, is, is someone you heard on TV. It could be any of us. I'm talking about any of us uh, preaching right now. We're the GPS. Because if we're not lined up with the map, we're going to be incorrect. And the map is God's word. And the preachers, all of us preaching is the GPS. And we say something and we tend, maybe went off on our own little side tangent or we had a different agenda for what we're trying to accomplish in our preaching. And you decided to say, okay, you know what? I heard this on, from the GPS, but let me look at this map real quick and let me see if this really is the best route for me. Is this really truly going to get me to where I'm trying to go? And you look at it and you notice that the GPS then took you up here and took you around this bend and brought you down here. And next thing you know, it, it brought you past your mark and then it told you to turn around and come back. You got to sit there and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, this is not the best route for me because the map says all I got to do is take this straight line and this straight line will take me straight there. But because the GPS is so much more fancier, I don't have to read. I don't have to pick this up. I don't have to really type nothing in. I can actually speak into it or whatever the case may be nowadays. And it can give me this, but it has really taken us off the path and it's got us so confused and lost on in direction. And trust me, I follow GPS both personal and professional. Those, those are the terms I use. That means my, in my personal life and in my professional life. And GPS is truly, I wouldn't even give it a good 70% accurate as far as being the most efficient thing to get. Um, a lot of truckers have at least two or three different GPSs. Why? Because they know themselves that there are so many issues in GPS. If you have these three, you can at least compare them and hopefully you can weed out some of that unnecessary driving. And in our case, some of that unnecessary testing trials that we got to go through because we're following the, in the wrong GPS. My sixth point is community oriented. And again, I, I thought about um, Mother Bonnie's prayer about being in one as I heard it uh, this morning. And it really made me go back to this point and think about it. Um, the Bible teaches us that iron shop resign. And in, in our world, in the truckers' world, it's a CD. That is our way of staying in communication with other truckers. That's how in the trucking community, they try to communicate and help one another. Um, sometimes when they go to the truck stops, you may get a good truck driver and they want to inform you about things that's going on. Or they may tell you a person may have a problem doing something. They may tell some, some from their past experience how they were able to, uh, you know, get past that issue. But if we're in a world, in, in, in a, a, a belief that we can't listen to anyone unless they are part of our ministry, even though they are versed in God's word, we are just defeating this whole journey. We are not helping one another. Uh, another thing I think about in our trucking world is our mirrors. When I first started driving a truck, a mirror on your hood but I mean, the front of the truck, the hood was optional. But they started to realize that that mirror actually helps eliminate a blind spot on the truck. And for the for people who don't drive trucks, blind spots are the spots that we can't see you at all. 
and we have a mirror on the door that actually now kind of captures those that kind of sit on the side of the truck, a little bit in front of the uh, the trailer, right on the side of the tractor, by the tractor, 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 tractor trailer door. There, there's a little blind spot, but they put a mirror there now to kind of capture that. But then there are some people that actually moved just a little bit in front of that. They didn't pass the truck yet, but they got just between the, the, the hood, the front of the hood, and in the middle of that door, and you still couldn't see them. And so they started putting mirrors on the hoods. And that helps to eliminate blind spots all along the side of that tractor trailer. But you got to have them set correctly, and you have to use them. Well, it's the same thing with us as believers. If we're not set or in a mindset to want to help one another, to want to warn them when blind spots are coming, we are defeating ourselves in this walking, in this journey. We must learn to come together in unity. We must learn to stop fighting and bickering and wanting the biggest number of people or the most famous as pastors and all these other things. No, it's all about Jesus. It's not about me. It shouldn't be about you. It should be about Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who died for us. Not one of us on this line or any other lines or any previous lifetimes have died for our sins. Why? Because they couldn't do it. If they were able to do it, God would not have sent his son. But he sent them because he needed someone to pay the cost of all the sins that we committed. And all we have to do is trust the process of following and believing in him. So we have to make up in our own minds as this new year come up. Is that something that we're really willing to do to help one another in this walk? To be there and not just stuck up on our own understanding, but definitely diving deeper into God's word. And I got one more point. But to dive into God's word to get a true understanding. And for those that receive it, you may be uh, raised a certain way and you refuse to open your hearts and your mind to anything outside of how you were raised but you should always ask yourself, was I raised properly? Because one of the things I think about in the past is it was illegal to teach black folks to read. They did learn to read. They definitely learned, became educated, but not all of them at the time. And some things were passed down just off of their own understanding. And we must go back and look and make sure that what they were teaching us back then is what God truly wants us to know. There is a reason why all of this is being said, and not just by me, but everyone who comes up on this line that's speaking, I'm here. It's so much about making sure that we definitely get what the Bible is truly teaching us or saying to us so that we may enjoy what blessings God has in store for us. And then the last point I got is being resilient in our faith, in, in our tests and trials, and in, in definitely during our temptation. See, I mentioned earlier that we tend to give up with that New Year's resolution. You know, things get a little bit harder for us or all of a sudden I get a craving for something and I, I, I give in and pay into that craving and the next thing you know, I'm back addicted to whatever it is. I don't care if it's food or drugs or alcohol or even sex. I don't care which one it is, but we gave in to a little bit. A little bit wouldn't hurt us, but then we come finding out it has truly brought us back to where we started from. It makes me think about... Uh, Bruce Millions with Richard Pryor and Richard Pryor was trying to get rid of $30 million in 30 days and he couldn't get any asset and he was being wasteful with his money and then on one point he thought that investing in this iceberg thing, the iceberg from the Arctic down to uh, I think it was Saudi Arabia or Africa or something like that, that that would be a tremendous waste of money but he come finding out or he come find out that that actually was a great idea in his stocks turned around and made him another $10 million. And so he thought about betting on these long shots and that brought him in another $1 million. So even though he had spent over $10 million in, in the process, he gained $11 million in the wrong, um, because he made some wrong decisions, but he didn't give up. He continued, he continued. And of course, at the end of the movie, he was successful. But it's the same thing. When our tests and trials come, we can't give up. We got to understand Jesus defeated death. Jesus defeated temptation. Jesus defeated hunger. Jesus defeated, he was always going off by himself. So you know he had to defeat loneliness because he didn't worry about that. He defeated these things. And as long as we're in him, as long as we decide to hold on to what he's giving us, we can be just as victorious as he has been. We cannot allow the devil to just 
fully come in and not have that discernment that we need to sit there and say, no, no, devil, we don't want that. No, no, we're not going to take that. No, no, we're not going to uh, indulge in that because the world is saying it's okay. As I wrap this up, I definitely truly want everyone to think about the new year as it comes upon us in the things that you truly want in your life coming going forward. Do you truly want to see God blessing you as the Bible says? Do you really want to be able to help those uh, in need as we go forth laying on your hands in prayer or any of these other things? Uh, do you want that or do you want to continue to just kind of like go along this path blindly. I'm going to say again with the uh, GS and hopefully that you'll get there. Hopefully it, it won't be uh, taking you so far out the way that you don't see the blessing that God has in store for you. Any reflections, any prayer requests going forth. Uh, again, I'm going to tell you that yes, I will be saying a prayer for everyone on the line. All the people here it really because like I said, we all need prayer, whether we want to say it, claim it or not, we do. We need, we need prayer. We're not all 100% because we're in the flesh. So we always have something that's going on with us. Uh, I see hands up and I'm going to, I don't, I'm going to take it uh, Evangelist Davis first. So go ahead, Evangelist. Amen. Mm -hmm. She always would say this in First Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and the sixth verse. It says the second part, and I'll just read those quick. It says, Your glory is not me. Know ye that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. We have to be careful about just taking a little bit. Maybe. Because a little bit, there's no big and there's no little sin. Well, if I take just a little sin, can take you all the way back to alcoholism. Amen. That little taste of, of uh, sugar can take you all the way back to eating so much sweets that it affects your body. Amen. That little bit of that little white line can take you keep you out of heaven because once you tell that little white one, you don't have to tell a little black one. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sister Cheryl. Praise the Lord for the word on this morning, Pastor. I mm -hmm. appreciate it. It just brought some things to mind. Um, when you start talking about uh, the GPS and then the moral compass and things of that nature and, and falling along with the, the world versus the word. And uh, you know how people always say, well, the ends justify the means. What? <laughs> I, Some of you may 
may know and some of you may not know. We have to have money to go to the movies, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to get all the kids in. And you don't always have enough because then you have to you have to think, okay, I need money for this or that. You know, we gotta have popcorn, that's gonna be this much, that's gonna be that much, and then we gotta go to the Dollar Tree to go to the stadiums and candies. <laughs> For that, um, yes, that is true. Uh, and and, and, I, and I see, um, I don't know the name, the STEAM Dream Education. I see your hand up, but yeah, um, that we do take this season for more about gifts instead of what it really is about. And people do go broke and all that other stuff, have outstanding bills just to buy gifts, and, and that is not what this is about. But go ahead, STEAM Dream Education. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Dr. Bullens. Thank you. 
No, thank you, Dr. Bullens. I appreciate the, uh, I call it the watering is what you just did. I planted and you watered, so I truly appreciate that. Thank you. Mother Owens? also for bringing more water. I do have a request um, for number seven, being resilient. And um, being resilient again is it's just standing there. I mean, I, I mean, what I'm saying is it's not giving up. It's, it's just not giving up. I, I know um, scripturally we can always look at Job and all that Job has went through. And, and you could just easily give in and say, you know what? I don't want to go through this no more. I done lost my children. I lost my job. You know, I'm sick and I can just give up. But no, in, in, in discernment and what we're working with in this journey, no, we can't give up because the world is looking at us and we are definitely, um, you, you know, um, I, I think about those neighbors that's always watching busybodies, you know, they're kind of watching what you're doing, especially all your coworkers. If you tell them I'm Christian and what they're, what they're looking for is for you to fall. They're looking for you to fail. They're looking for you to give up. Um, I know when I made my transition from being just Robert to being a Christian Robert, um, I, I was always being watched and people wanted to see how I would respond to getting angry or things rubbing me the wrong way. And even when things got hard, uh, no, my, my mind goes to, I got to give it to Jesus. And that's what the resilient part is. We got to give it to Jesus. So when we start, the devil start coming at us with all these little things. Uh, um, we have to understand, no, it's not just me by myself. I got God's spirit. I got God. He got his hands on me. He got his angels around me. There is no need for me to give up. But the devil will tell us it's hopeless. You're not, you're never getting there. You're never going to get what you want or whatever the case may be. You're not going to, there is no God. There is no heaven. And all of these things come our way. And we are not to give up on it. We are to fight like our, and it, and it does, our life depends on it. Um, Sister Denise, I hope that helped you, uh, Sister um, Cheryl. Hey, brother. How you doing?
natural thing that's good, but it's a discernment, it's a choice we have to make in order to either touch it or walk away or turn away from it. That's the lesson I learned as a saint, as studying the word of God and allowing the Holy Ghost to lead me to know what's good for evil. We can't just call everything evil because it's a desert. It's it's, it's something that's going to either stay in our life, or the Lord tell you, don't go down this road, don't go down that road, you know, or you see something, or the signs start showing you as you head towards the road, they physically got signs that say, don't go down this way, but you decide to go down that way. They, you know, they, they may not mean that. Okay. Then you go down that road, then you see why they had signed up. But anyway, I'm done. I just want to say thank God for the word. What little bit I heard this morning, bless my soul, Pastor Robert. Appreciate you, man. Love you. God bless. Thanks. Y'all be encouraged. You know we love you, um, Minister Calvin. Uh, thank you for your words and your feedback. Uh, Dr. Bullis want me to recap all seven of the points, and I will uh, recap them. The first one is being rooted in God's word. Um, you got to understand that the deeper the root, the stronger the plant spiritually vigilant we have to be spiritually now this is just not talking with our eyes and say spiritually vigilant we have to be spiritually aware knowing of the difference that's coming or the subtle attacks that's coming our way um prayerfully we have to be prayerful and um i know the devil likes to keep us from praying but we got to understand that prayer is our connection that is our wi-fi that is our internet that is our network to god and once we know we have that path where we have a direct connection to God, but just like in a network, and this is being prayerful, we send a packet and that packet sends some information back to us. That lets us know that we have a communication and it's the same with God. We may send a prayer up, but we got to stop and listen. You know, don't just jump up and listen to what God is saying to us. To be um, grounded in his word, theologically informed, that means we definitely must know his word and what he, um, when I say he, God is saying to us. Number five is being aligned with God's words. Um, we definitely got to understand when we're being prayerful and all those things, everything we may see and want, and even what we hear from other uh, online ministers, or even in-person ministers, may not be what God wants for us. We got to understand God has a purpose for us, and we have to be willing to uh, stay in line with that. Number six is being community-oriented to stop all this bickering and division amongst us as Christians, but understand if we're all serving that one Jesus and know he died for our sins, we should all be willing to help one another and to understand iron sharpens iron, to be there for us in our blind spots. And when I say iron sharpens iron, that's exactly what it is. It's hard sometimes. You may not like it, but you know what though? If it's going to make me better, I need to accept it. And of course, resilience, like I said before, we're not going to faint. We're not going to fade away um, as our testing trials come our way. Amen. I've seen, okay, there we go. I got Sister Abigail. I'm actually looking for prayers. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, I got you down, Sister Abigail. If there are no more prayer requests, uh, that's all I would like to say. Please humble yourself where you are. Uh, humble your heart, humble your mind, humble your spirit that you will allow God to work in you to work with you lord as i bow as we come to you um, first of all we want to truly thank you for this day thank you for this morning truly thank you for the word and all the feedback that has came forth we ask that you truly touch us in our heart minds and spirit that we will apply what we learned today that we will become new creatures in you coming forth in this 2024 uh, that we will not fade away we will definitely become more we're committed to learn more about you, um, to uh, to show others your light shining brightly in us. Lord, I'm asking for prayer for Sister Abigail, um, for her son, Ricky, of course, and for her daughter, Samaria, who's um, also going through and definitely to keep Sister Abigail up and strengthen and encourage. I'm praying for uh, Sister Pat Brown, uh, asking for guidance, that God will truly guide and direct you on your path. I'm praying for Brother Spencer Bonaby, Minister Frank Calvin, Brother Eric Bell, and anyone else who's dealing with these kidney issues, 
Uh-huh. That God will definitely give you comfort as you go through these tests. I mean, I mean, I know this is a hard one on you guys, but God will give you encouragement and everything else as you go through. And definitely, if it's in his will, I have to say it that way for you to get a donor, that you will get the donors and, um, you know, help heal you in your body. For those that go through uh, the diabetes, the chronic pains, the, the, the depressions, the mental uh, issues, the physical issues, the loneliness, the, the, the money issues, just any of those issues, I'm praying that God will touch us all. Those that have pride issues, those that have issues that I'm going to call narcissistic issues that I won't I'm never admit that they're wrong. God touch them. We're asking that you touch us all as we come forth to 2024. We want to be new in you. We want to be so rooted in you, Lord, that the world can't help but ask, who is this Jesus? Amen. Love you all. Be blessed. blessed. Have a safe and wonderful day. Love the word. See you all tomorrow. And your prayer bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hey. hey young man how you doing good to see you merry christmas uh, love you i'm actually signing off right now you take care uh, send me a message about what's going on with you